Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. We have finished doing almost all the math problems from this book. If there is any problem at all that gives you trouble and if you wish to watch the solution to it, you will find the solutions to almost all the math, pro math problems from this book from day number 251 through 400. From 251 through 400. This book, the second edition, happens to contain the exact same problem in most cases and appearing on exactly the same page numbers as the ones that appeared in the first edition of the revised GRE. In the event that you are interested in watching the original solutions to the problems, we have finished doing all, we have, we have finished doing all the problems from this book. In the event that you are interested in watching any of the original solutions to the problems, you will find all the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. From 1 through 250. Right now, we are in the process of solving some quantitative comparison questions. Quantitative comparison questions, as you know, are a big chunk of the exam, they are an important part of the exam, they have not gone away. Unfortunately for us, the newer books do not provide us with enough practice problems. For that reason, beginning with day number 401, we began solving quantitative comparison questions out of this book here, the 10th edition of the General GRE. This book contains 7 exams, right now we are on the very last exam, and this series is going to end at 470. We are at the very last exam from day number 461 through 470 is our last exam here and we are on page number 361. Please turn to it, page number 361. Problem number 10 is what we are about to do. Problem number 10, the penultimate problem on the page. The penultimate problem on the page, problem number 10. When it appeared in the exam, when it appeared in the exam, 56% of people had no trouble with it. Here is the problem. We are given a parallelogram. P, Q, R, S. We are told P, Q, R, S is a parallelogram. Now before we go any further, why do we have to actually spell it out? Doesn't it look like a parallelogram? Why do we? Why do they have to? Why do they have to spell it out in the exam? Because you see, I'm reproducing the exam. I'm, re I'm, I'm reproducing the question here on the blackboard, exactly the way they appeared in the exam. Why do they have to spell it out? Doesn't it look like a parallelogram? The answer is no. You cannot go by what things look like in the exam. I'm digressing here big time. Just to remind you one more time that the pictures on the exams are not drawn to scale. You cannot assume that something is a square, you cannot assume that something is a rectangle, we cannot assume that something is a circle, you cannot assume that something is a parallelogram just because it looks like one. We cannot assume, we cannot assume, if, we, if I draw two circles next to each other, you cannot assume that this circle is bigger than that circle, unless I tell you something about these two circles. If we, if we are told the circumference of these two circles, if we are told the radius, the radii of the two circles, if we are told the diameters of those two circles, we have to have some concrete information that tells us for sure, that, uh, that enables us to ascertain that this in fact is the larger circle. As I remind you all the time, this ain't a beauty contest. We do not go by the looks. Do you understand? This is a parallelogram. It is a parallelogram. I know it because they tell me so. Do you understand? And you will see in a second that this bit of information is crucial, it's vital, it's essential to solving the problem. If we did not know if we did not know that this was a parallelogram, we could not be able to solve this. We would not have been able to solve the problem. Here's the problem. We are told that this is this angle is three three x degrees, and this one is four y degrees. And what we are what we are being asked to compare is column A, which is x, versus column B, which is y. I'll, I will be quiet now. I'll get out of your way. I'll give you five seconds to pause and unpause the video, solve the problem yourself. Well, because of the fact that we know that it is a parallelogram, we know that in a parallelogram the opposite angles have to be equal to each other. 
which means 3x has to equal 4y. 3x has to equal 4y. Let me put it the way I I was about that, that, that I was going to say 3x has to equal 4y. Well, what do you gather from that? What we gather from is that if 3 of some amount, if 3 times some amount equals to 4 times some amount, then this y would have to be this y would have to be less than x. This y would have to be less than x. For example, y might be y for example y might be 3 and x might be 4. But as you can see, 3 times 4 is equal to 4 times 3. 3 times 4 is 4 times 3. I'm plugging in numbers here. As you can see, x is in this case is 4, y is 3. If 3 times some amount, if, if only 3 of the x, if only 3 of the x can take 4 of the y's, that means y is smaller than x. That's what we have done. Y is smaller than x. The answer is A. Next one, number 11. Question number 11. Question number 11, as it appeared in the exam. Question number 11, or rather I meant to say when it appeared in the exam. 36% of the people got it right. The remaining two-thirds of the people, little, little less than two-thirds, missed it. Here's, here's what the problem says. We're being asked to compare. Oh, what does the word penultimate mean? What does the word penultimate mean? Penultimate is just a very fancy way of saying, penultimate is just a very fancy way of saying, second to the last. Second to the last. We learned this word in our vocabulary lessons on day number 11, I believe. Yes, day number 11. Vocabulary, day 11. In the event, in the event that you're interested in improving your vocabulary, and I see no reason why you wouldn't be, if you want to get a decent score in the English portion, you need to have decent vocabulary. Uh, take advantage of the vocabulary videos. Just type in vocab GRE vocabulary words. Just type in GRE vocabulary words. Day 11. And you will see the video where you will learn the word penultimate along with some other good useful words. Do you understand? Here's, here's column A. In column A we're being asked to compare. We're being asked to compare the sum of all integers. Sum of all integers from 19 to 59 inclusive sum of all the numbers from 19 to 59 inclusive inclusive means we have to we have to include 19 and we have to include 59 in our calculation uh, we have to include the endpoints versus column B the sum of all integers sum of all integers from 22 to 60 inclusive from 22 to 60 inclusive I'll give you five seconds to pause and unpause the video I insist that you do it yourself first once you have done it then compare your work against the work that you and I will do together in a few seconds time okay I'll be quiet now Okay, here we go. This one begins with 19 and ends at 59. So let's let's try them out. 19 plus 20 plus 21 plus 22 plus 23 plus 24 plus 25 26 plus 58 plus 59 plus that's it 59. It ends at 59. It ends at 59. So that takes care of this column all the way from 19 to 59. This column begins the story begins at 22. So we have 22 plus 23 plus 24 plus 25 plus 26 plus 59 plus 60. That's where the story ends. 59 plus 60. What do we notice? What do we notice here? One thing that we must always keep in mind. One thing that you must always keep in mind. We've been at, we've been at it for 63 days now. We, as I told you, we began this series at 401. And... During those 63 days, uh, in the course of, the, of those 63 days, I have reminded you on numerous occasions what these questions are called. These questions are called quantitative comparison, which is why we write down the word computation 
and we cross it out for emphasis to remind ourselves that these questions are not called quantitative computation. Nobody is asking us, no one is asking us to compute anything at all. We are being asked to compare the two quantities. And when we compare the two quantities, what do we notice right away? We notice that uh, there is a 22 here and there is a 22 there. What would happen, do you suppose, if we subtract 22 from both columns? If we subtract 22 from both columns, this 22 disappears, this 22 disappears. I see 23 here, I see 23 there. Let's subtract 23 from both columns. 23 disappears. I see 24 here, I see 24 there, that disappears. I see 58 here, and there's a 58 here. There's a 58 here. Let's subtract 58 from both columns. 58 is going to disappear. I see 59 here, I see 59 over there. Let's subtract 59 from both columns. And by the time we end up doing all that, what are we left with in the second column, in column B? Column B, everything is going, going in the column B, except the last number, 60. And what are we left with in the first column, column A? Everything is going, except these three numbers, 19 plus 20 plus 21. And what we notice about these three numbers, we notice that 19 is one less than 20, and 21 is one more than 20. This is one more than 20, this is one less than 20. In other words, they are all 20s. Their sum is going to be 60. That's exactly what we have here. The answer is C. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.